Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now for this week's video, we want to discuss the atomic and ionic radius across period 3 elements. So let's take a look at the atomic radius across period 3. Now you notice we have our period 3 elements here, starting from our group 1, sodium, group 2 element, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine, from group 1 to group 17. And the atomic radii trend is here. Sodium, the atomic radii, it is the biggest. And in general, you notice it decreases as I move across period 3. What we want to do, run through, is what is the concept that I can use to explain the atomic radii across period 3 elements. Now, the atomic radius is actually quite simple. What we do is we use this concept involving effective nuclear charge to explain the atomic radii. Let us take a look at that. Atomic radii across period 3 can be explained using effective nuclear charge. Now, if you find effective nuclear charge familiar, this is because we have used effective nuclear charge in atomic structure to explain ionization energy trends. So, the idea involving effective nuclear charge is linked to the total number of protons and the nuclear charge, and the total number of electrons, and more importantly, how the electrons are arranged, and its shielding effect. Then when we combine these two ideas together, we will have the overall attraction between the nucleus and the valence electron. And this has an effect in terms of the energy required for me to remove the electron. So this will be linked to ionization energy. This also has an effect in terms of how strongly the nucleus can pull the electron towards itself. Then this will be related to size. So we are focusing on atomic radii here. So let us use the concept of effective nuclear charge to explain atomic radii. Now we know that across my period 3, the proton number will increase, and therefore the nuclear charge will increase. The nuclear charge is just simply the charge of my nucleus. So if I have more positive protons, then my nucleus will be more positively charged, then it should have a stronger attraction on my electrons. Next, how about the electrons. I know that I'm adding electrons, the number of electrons will increase, but I'm adding electron to the same principal quantum shell. So let me just put this here, adding electrons to the same principal quantum shell. Now for electrons added to the same shell, because the distance from the nucleus is roughly the same, so electrons in the same shell, in general, they do not block each other, or they do not shield each other, and therefore the shielding effect or the screening effect is roughly the same. So in this case, my shielding effect is unchanged or there's no much difference in terms of my shielding effect. This means that when I combine these two ideas together, the increase in nuclear charge, stronger attraction between the nucleus and the electron, and shielding effect is roughly the same. So when I combine these two together, the effective nuclear charge actually will increase. Overall, there will be a stronger attraction between the nucleus and the valence electron, the nucleus will be able to pull the electrons closer to itself. This will mean that the radius will decrease. This is the explanation why, in general, the atomic radii across period 3 will decrease. So if I come back to the graph here, we would expect sodium as an atom, the size will be the biggest. Progressively, when I move across period 3, the size will decrease. Now next, how about ionic radii across period 3? The ionic radii trend is given here, which is pretty interesting because when I look at the ionic radii involving sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, in general it decreases. But then from silicon to phosphorus, the radii actually shoots up and involving your ionic radii for phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine, again it decreases. So how do we explain this ionic radii across period 3? Because it looks a bit weird. There's a very big jump in terms of the ionic radius from silicon to phosphorus. Ionic radii actually can be broken down into two portions. Let us talk about it part by part. The first portion is we notice that in general, all my anions will be larger than all my cations. Now, for my period 3 elements, when they form ions, they will form ions involving different charges. The first four elements, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, and silicon, they will form cations. So basically, they will lose electrons to form positively charged cations. Sodium will be Na+, magnesium will be Mg2+, aluminum will be Al3+, and silicon will be Si4+. So depending on the number of valence electrons that they have, 
then they will lose the number of electrons to form cations. So they're missing group 1, one valence electron, or lose one electron to form Na+, magnesium is in group 2, two valence electron, loses two electrons to form Mg2+, and so on. Aluminum will be a plus 3 charge, silicon will be a plus 4 charge. And you notice for all my cations, from Na+, Mg2+, Al3+, and Si4+, the number of electrons they will have will be 10 electrons, and if I have only 10 electrons, then this will mean that there will only be two principal quantum shells. Only two principal quantum shells will be filled. So involving my cations, I will only have two principal quantum shells. Now, how about my anions? Involving phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine. Phosphorus will be P3 minus, gain three electrons. Sulfur will be S2 minus, will gain two electrons. Chlorine will gain one electron to give me Cl minus. So involving my P3 minus, S2 minus, and Cl minus, all of them, they have 18 electrons. And therefore, they will have three shells, or three principal quantum shells will be filled. And this is the reason why the first thing we notice is all my anions will be larger than all the cations because the anions, they are all 18 electrons. So I will have three principal quantum shells. Involving all my cations, I will only have 10 electrons. So only two principal quantum shells are filled. So involving two different species, my anions has three shells versus my cations with two shells. Obviously, the one with more shells will be bigger in terms of size. So this is the reason why all my anions will be larger than the cations. Now the next thing that we notice is within each set, within the cations, there's a decrease in the radii. Within the anions, there's also a decrease in the radii. So we want to explain how come within my cations, Na+, plus, Mg2+, plus, Al3+, plus, Si4+, plus, there's a decrease in the size involving P3-, S2-, Cl-, there's also a decrease in the size. Now, involving the decrease in the radii within the cations and within the anions, this idea will go back to effective nuclear charge. So let us take a look at effective nuclear charge. Again, we use this flowchart to try to figure out what will happen to my effective nuclear charge and the radius. It's again the same idea. I know that as I move across the period, from Na+, plus, Mg2+, plus, Al3+, plus, to Si4+, plus, there's an increase in the number of protons, so I'll have more positively charged nucleus, the nuclear charge will increase. Then, the number of electrons in this case for my cations are the same, eh? because if I come back to here, all my cations, they have 10 electrons, they're isoelectronic. So the arrangement of the electrons and the shooting effect should be exactly the same. Similarly, for my anion, P3-, S2-, Cl-, they are all 18 electron. They are also isoelectronic. So the shooting effect should be exactly the same because the electronic configuration and the arrangement of the electrons are exactly the same. So the number of electrons are exactly the same, isoelectronic. So we would expect shooting effect to be identical. Again, if I combine these two, increase in the nuclear charge, no change in shooting effect. So the overall effective nuclear charge will increase. I'll have a stronger attraction between the nucleus and the valence electron. I'll be able to pull the electrons closer to myself and the size will decrease. We would expect the radius to decrease. Within the cations, there will be a decrease in the radius. Within the anions, there will also be a decrease in the radius. So this is the reason why when we come back to the graph here, there will be a decrease in the ionic radii from sodium all the way to silicon, then from phosphorus to chlorine. All right, so that was the discussion involving explaining our atomic radii and ionic radii across period three elements. And we use the concept involving effective nuclear charge to explain the overall attraction between the nucleus and the valence electron and how tightly the nucleus can pull the electron towards itself and it affects the size as a result of that. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.